This is by Luca Abergo from uh, the, the Department of Science and uh, Aerospace Science and Technology of Politecnico di Milan. Great. Luca, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. This is my first speech in person, so please be gentle. We are going to, we are going to talk about uh, a joint optimization with radial basis function as mesh deformation technique. And we're going to use it also for smoothing sensitivity. This project is carried on by me, Mais Morelli, but maybe you met him in the past, and with the supervision of the professor Alberto Bartoli. So this not changing slide. Okay, just the words. Okay, yeah. So the target is to automatically improve the aero performance of a certain object. We want to extend the capability of S2 of, to optimize, uh, especially want to treat non-planar geometries. Mathematically talking, it, in, it means to solve a minimization problem where we select a certain objective function J. Usually it is a, an aerodynamic coefficient. And we impose some constraints. The first one it is we require that the residual of the flow solution has to be null, so we have a converged solution. And second, we need a certain consistency between the surface mesh and the volumetric weight. First, you need to parameterize your body in order to control the shape and have some design variables to change. And the technique used in SU2 is called FFD. So you insert the body inside the box, but you can split it in smaller bricks, and you use the position of the vertices as control variables. When you move one of the vertices, everything that is inside is morphed properly. And this is the geometry description. Then you need to run a run simulation, so the direct simulation of our loop, in order to know the flow solution and compute the objective function that you want to minimize. Then you want to know how the objective function is going to change if you morph a certain part of your body. And to do so, you need to compute the surface sensitivity. We use the technique called discrete adjoint, which is uh, coded with automatic differentiation using CODIPAC. So now we know what part of the body has to be deformed in order to improve our performance, and we need to do it. So we need a mesh deformation technique. The one that we developed in a Polytechnico and we added to these optimization loops is called RBF, Radial Basis Function, which is an interpolation technique. Um, it can handle larger displacement, it very well preserves the quality of the mesh, and it is computationally cheap. In comparison of the previous method that was implemented in SU2, which is a linear elasticity analogy, which treats the, the mesh as a, a solid continuum undergoing to a deformation. So in this case, it is an interpolation. So we impose the exact displacement at some control point, and then we compute the, the fields that we want to displace first for the surface, and the value it is related to, to the distance from each node of the surface to the control point when we want the exact value. We compute the weight solving the first linear system, and then we propagate in the volume, the deformation, and the displacement of the surface, solving a second linear system. In the past, RBF was already used for shape optimization and deformation, but was computationally expensive. Now it is more cheap since we introduced two data reduction schemes. The first one it is a multi-point selection of the control points. What it means? It means that uh, we can impose the maximum number of control points. So where we are going to impose exact, exactly the displacement. And we select them in an iterative way. We start with just one point where the displacement is maximum. We compute the interpolation field. We found where the error is max, and we impose another control point. Iterative solve the linear system increasing the insight. And the second data reduction scheme is called the reduction volume linear system. We are not going to shift all the points of the grid but only the ones that are inside the bubble around our body, which dimension is chosen dynamically at each iteration, and it is related to the maximum displacement that we want to impose. 
So we need to verify that the sensitivity that we obtain from the discrete adjoint with new mesh deformation technique is reliable. So we compare the, the results with a final difference technique. We found out that the step of 10 at minus 7, it is a reliable for final difference. And to do so, we did the verification directly in 3D with the other M6 wing in transonic condition. And we require deep convergence both for the dark simulation and for the dark simulation. And as you can see, the two lines almost perfectly match. We have a relative error lower than 2%, both for the CD sensitivity and for the lift coefficient sensitivity. Then we wanted to study how much deformation impacts the dark simulation. So we impose a one centimeter deformation to the trailing, uh, trailing edge at the tip, which is like the upper bound, which is just really necessary for mesh deformation. So no, no larger deformation than one centimeter. We start from a grid that has minimum orthogonality of 12, and RBF almost preserves this value. Instead, with the other method implemented, we lose half of it. And this impacts the following direct simulation. So with uh, the mesh generated by RBF, we obtain convergence in 3,000 iterations. Instead, with the other grid, we need almost double of uh, the iteration. And moreover, the final flow solution is not exactly the same. So also the sensitivity that we are going to compute is going to be different. We uh, recorded the memory allocation and the CPU time during the mesh deformation process. And they have two different uh, history. Kela immediately allocates all the memory. Uh, instead, RBF the allocation, it is uh, dynamically increasing and it is related to the linear system that it is increasing in this dimension. But in the end, RBF took half of the time respect to ELA and one quarter of the RAM. So let's see some test cases. We start with the CRM, which is a test case proposed by AAA Adult Research Group, which is focused on shape optimization. We are in front sonic condition. We want to minimize the drag, giving constant the lift, the volume of the wing, and uh, the maximum thickness in port section. We do the optimization with one single FPD box of 128 design variables, which is the best value indicated by the expert group. And we monitor the CP distribution at five sections. We do the optimization using both the methods. And as you can see, in, in blue, you have the results with RPF and in red with ELA. And we obtain a strong reduction, almost seven drug counts with RPF at the cost of increasing a bit more the torque, which is not a constraint of our optimization. It is, it is just monitored. They both well preserved the volume of the wing. And here, there are a shape obtained in two different sections at the middle of the wing and close to the tip. And as you can see, you obtain a different CP distribution. Then, as I said, at the first, the target is to optimize more complex geometry. So we optimize a no ram and six with a winglet attached, which is not a very well optimized wing at the first. So we expect a great reduction of the drag. But this kind of optimization was possible only with RBF because with VELA, when you have non planar geometry, you lose a lot of minimum orthogonality. And so, just after a couple of loops of optimizations, you are not able to go on. And here you can see the result. You obtain a strong reduction of the CD, almost 20 drug counts, and the new shape of the winglet can be seen at naked eyes. So last part of the presentation is an ongoing project that starts from two observations. The first one is that the surface sensitivity it is a very scattered field with a lot of small oscillation that you cannot expect. And the second one is that some commercial softwares are starting to say that they smooth the surface sensitivity. And uh, we were curious about studying the impact on the shape optimization. We realized that RBF is used in the graphical field also to smooth the image, the noisy image. So we decided to use it also for this uh, capability. To do so, you have to uh, add three parameters to the formulation. The first one is lambda. It modifies the diagonal of the linear system where you compute the weight. And the, two, the other two are called beta and C. In this case, you have already computed the weights. 
when you go for creating the interpolation field, you do not use anymore the original render function, but you modify a, a bit it with this parameter. So the optimization loop, it is enriched with uh, an extra step. You do the geometric parameterization, the direct simulation, you compute the sensitivity, and you smooth it with RPF before projecting it into the design space, which is done inside the x dot. And then you're going to deform the mesh again with RBF. The same code does two different things. So here it is the effect of beta, which has to be higher than one. The effect is that you lower the value where the sensitivity it is already low. So you are kind of focusing the optimization on the part of the body where you have high magnitude of sensitivity. Instead, C, it is more complicated to set because it has a physical dimension. It has to be higher than zero, of course, but it has also to be lower than uh, the minimum uh, distance between two nodes of the surface grid. Or we are going to have some changes of sign in the sensitivity. What does C? It reduces the variance where you have high oscillation, maintaining the average value. So here is the, the target it is to cancel this oscillation, but keeping the general information that the sensitivity is giving us in that region. We have done some test cases, but for now, um, the well-suited are just in 2D. So we applied it to arrive to AG22. We are in transonic condition with one FTT box and 24 design variables. We always preserve the lift to changing a bit the angle of that. Beta is set to 1.05, C it is 1.2 millimeters, and lambda is 10 to minus 3. The impact uh, on the shape optimization uh, is not high. We reduce it more only of uh, 0.5 drag tons, but uh, the minimum it is obtained uh, 10 iteration earlier. And uh, as you can see, the final distribution of the CP is really similar. So we need more tests to understand uh, the impact uh, on the optimization. Thank you for the attention. Any question? Are there any questions? Yes. Hi, thank you. Um, I did not to Ever to introduce yourself first? Okay, you might want to repeat the, the question for the to people you. online. Uh, you asked me why the memory allocation of RBF increase uh, during the, the process. This is due to a... Those are different scales. Yeah, sorry, very, very different scales. Uh, ELA use 16 gigabytes in that test case, instead of RBF use 4. Uh, what uh, is really useful with RBF is, is that you can control the RAM that we are going to use. So if you don't have enough power, you can lower the, the computational cost because you impose the maximum number of control points where you are going to impose exactly the displacement of a, of a surface. So these yellow dots. Okay. You know the displacement of all the surface, but you impose it exactly only on the yellow dots, and they are selected iteratively. So you start with just one point where the displacement is maximum, you compute the interpolation, and you watch where the error between the exact displacement and the interpolation is max, and you add the number of points back. You go solve again the linear system, and so that is why the computational cost, sorry, the RAM allocation is increasing. Uh, you can see a jump because we use a multi-step, um, multi, multi, yeah, multi-step, multi-phase. So at a certain point, we stop this process, and we are not uh, minimizing anymore the forced, uh, the, the entire displacement field. But uh, the target is to minimize the R maximum error that we, are, we have obtained. Thank you. Michael. How are you solving the with uh, LAPAC. Repeat the question. Uh, they asked me how we solve the linear system, sorry. And we use an external library which is called LAPAC. Thank you.
because I know I am pretty well in the story, but challenging those of you for getting there, you know, in my shape, you know, in, in the last one. We are also in the past, uh, now we are using the same models, but we also have the layer versus the additional issues, because we have very much out there, the tools are very close to the long term. I was wondering when you're going to do real life on what and my question is the RBC is already available. The problem is the same. But you ask me if uh, the code is already available to the community. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. and we did not start the review of the code with the uh, SC2 Foundation because we were developing uh, with a uh, smoothing capability. And, and so for, for now, no, it's not available. Are there plans to make it available? I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hopefully, to invent the target. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Maybe I have a question, one last. Uh, you have shown, and, and, and this is uh, quite natural, some uh, uh, regular test cases. Do you see any limitation when it comes to industrial strength problems, uh, optimization of an entire aircraft, including protrusions and so forth? Uh, the computational cost is, is really high. We are starting to use two different applications. Uh, for example, with Packet, uh, in collaboration with Bristol, we are optimizing the propeller with uh, quite some stuff in a rotating reference frame. And these applications are only for run equations. When you go to one steady, the, the, the cost scales up immediately. And it is difficult to see it uh, achievable in the short term. Okay, thank you. Thank you.